Started facing at a photo they've taken. Space tree flying through the skies and battles happen everywhere. I don't need any hero to save me. I don't know why the kids always crying. I've been thinking about all the captains, but we left in a wasted planet. I thought I had it all together. Hello, everybody, and what is up? It is your famous physics teacher, Mr. Fabianski. So I just want to welcome you to today's lesson. We are going to be talking all about circular motion. So we've talked about linear motion in the past, uh, moving in a straight line. We've talked about 2D, that's one dimensional motion. We've talked about 2D motion when we have something rolling off a cliff. It's no longer going in one dimension. It is now starting to fall down and that introduces a second dimension. We have the x-plane and the y-plane. Now we will be talking about circular motion when objects move in a circle. For example, when you're making a pizza and you twist the pizza and it's moving in a circle, what is that pepperoni gonna do that's on the pizza? Is it gonna stay there? Is it gonna fly off? If it does fly off, what direction will it travel? How much force will it need to fly off? Uh, maybe when your car is turning and you're going around a corner, yeah, right? What's going to happen there? What are you going to feel when you're inside that car? What forces are you going to feel acting on your body? Maybe if you are in the washing machine, which I don't know why you'd be in the washing machine, but then you're on the spin cycle and you go around in a circle, right? Whoa. A little dizzy here. What happens to those clothes? What happens to that water when you go around, well, when it goes around in a circle, okay? In the, in the medieval days, they would have the hammer throwing competition, right? And they'd have, a, have a, uh, a, a large mass tied onto a string and they'd swing it around and around and around and then throw it. Well, that's circular motion. What about a cowboy with a lasso, right? He's swinging around, he's gonna wrangle him some steer is. That is also circular motion. All of these things are circular motion. Even planets, right? Planetary motion is circular motion. The satellites, and I'm talking man-made satellites, but I'm also talking satellites to planets such as moons, right? Those are called satellites as well. Orbiting bodies. This all falls under circular motion. So to start this, I want to read you just a quick example. Uh, Rex and Doris are out on a date. Rex makes a rapid right hand turn. So I'm Rex and I make a rapid right hand turn. Okay, so I'm going to turn this way. I'm going to turn to the right. Now automatically you're starting to think as I turn to the right, where do I go? Do I go towards the inside of the car or do I get pushed to the outside of the car? Correct. I'll start to move to the outside, right? So if I'm turning this way, I'm going to move to the outside of the turn. Uh, Doris begins sliding along her seat, and then she collides with Rex. All right, so let's get this up on the board right here. So we have, here is Rex, and here is Doris, and they are in a car. Now what's gonna happen is, here's the steering wheel, right, here's your tires. Rex will make a right hand turn. Now as he turns to the right, Doris begins sliding this way. Rex actually slides that way too, but we're more concentrated on what Doris is doing. Okay, so Rex makes his hard right hand turn, and Doris begins sliding towards him. Now, in the awkwardness, because think about it, Doris has just slid next, next to Rex. So they're on a date, right? So Doris is now sitting next to Rex as he makes the turn. In the awkwardness, they start to talk about circular motion. I don't know about you, but when you're on a date and you start talking about circular motion, that date's over. 
Yeah, yeah, it is. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> so, uh, Doris moves towards Rex. They start to talk about circular motion. Okay. So, Doris... Let's see, what do they suggest? Okay, Rex suggests that objects move in a circular motion experience an outward force. Thus, as Rex made the turn, Doris experienced an outward force pushing her towards Rex. So, Rex, Rex thought that Doris moved outwards, that she was forced outwards. That's what Rex thought. Now, Doris, on the other hand, she's a smart cookie. She disagrees. She argued that objects which move in a circular path experience an inward force. Okay? Thus, as Rex traveled in a circle, the force of his door pushed inwards on him. And since Doris did not travel in that same circle, uh, excuse me, since Doris was a separate body, she continued to travel straight until the car, the door, and Rex caught up to her. All right? So Doris said that objects uh, experience an inward force. And so what does that mean in this diagram? Well, think about it this way. As they start to make this turn, Rex continues straight on and Doris continues straight on. However, the car begins to turn until such a point where Rex is now against the door. All right, he can't go any further. He can't continue straight on. So now he begins to curve with the car. And the reason he's curving is because he is feeling that inward force pushing on him. He didn't feel that up until the door essentially caught up with him. Now, Doris is in the same predicament here. It's supposed to be a D for Doris. So Rex is still feeling that inward force, but now Doris, if we look here, she kind of continued in a straight line, and then she hit Rex, where she moved up the seat. So really, in essence, the car and the door are doing the moving until they encounter Rex, and then he becomes part of the door until they continue on a straight line, and Doris encounters them, and then she, Rex, and the door become all one body, moving in a circular motion. So, Doris is in fact correct. Circular motion is all about that inward force. Okay, it's that inward force. All right, what I would like for us to do now is to take a couple notes on this. That way we can get some information all about circular motion and the terminology that goes along with it. All right, so today we're talking all about circular motion. Circular motion, the act of traveling in a circle along a path that has a certain radius. And radius is going to be very, very important here because that's going to factor into our calculations. So before we talk about any type of equations, we need to get some terminology down. Now think about it. When we are discussing circular motion, uh, think for example planets, or maybe the circular motion of the engine in your car, we're talking about two main terms. And those main terms are one, rotation, and two, revolution. Now we're not talking about the revolution in terms of history. Remember, history? No way. Not a subject. Mm -mm. Science is where it's at. Don't tell your history teachers. They frighten me. Anyway, so rotation. What exactly is a rotation? Anybody? Anybody? Okay, rotation is also known as spin. It's when an object turns about an internal axis. And I'll show you a diagram in just a second. 
Rotation is when an object turns about an internal axis. So what exactly does that mean? Let's take a look over at the other board and I will change markers for you guys. Let's go to blue. So when we're talking about turning about an internal axis, we have this. Let's say we have the Earth, correct? And the Earth we all know is on a tilt, 23 and a half degrees. 23.5 degrees tilted over. And we know that the Earth is now rotating about itself, about an internal axis. This is a rotation, okay? That is what a rotation is. So if I turn around like this, right, I'm rotating about this internal axis. Think about a line going right through me. I'm rotating along that line like a figure skater, right? I'm a figure skater, you know? Ta-da! That is a rotation. Okay. The next one we're going to talk about is a revolution. Again, not history, not a subject. Shh. Okay, a revolution is an object turning about an external axis now. So, an object that turns... Ooh, spelled that one wrong. That turns... about an external axis. And these are the important words, right? Internal and external. Ooh, that marker's kind of going bad. Might not be using that one. So let's get the drawing for that one up here. So now we have our sun, and our sun is nice and bright, and he's all happy because he's glowing, right? It's the sun. He's giving us the energy that we need. And then we have the Earth. I'm just going to put an Earth right there. And, you know, it travels in that ellipse shape. But we notice that the Earth is actually traveling around the sun, right? It's traveling around an external axis. It's not an internal. It's not within itself. It's an external axis. It is revolving around the sun while rotating around itself. Again, line through me. I rotate around myself, and now if I were to walk around, right? I put this little stool down here in the center, now I'm going to walk around. I'm going to revolve around the stool. Notice what a revolution looks like and what a rotation looks like. This is when we're talking about circular motion, we can talk about a rotation or a revolution. The next thing that we're going to introduce is the types of speeds or velocities that we could talk about. I'm going to leave this side up here and I'm going to jump to this side. So now let's talk about different types of speeds that we can discuss when we're talking about circular motion. Three types. Uh, let's see, different types of speed or velocity. So number one, we have linear speed. And I know this is kind of weird, right? We're talking all about circular motion, but now we just threw the word linear back in there. Linear is a straight line. What does that have to do with circular motion? Well, let's find out. Linear speed is the distance per unit time. Very straightforward, very, very simple, very to the point. Okay. Distance per unit time. Distance per unit time. And for that, we know V equals D over T, right? Velocity equals a displacement over a time. Right? Speed, dirt, right? Same, same idea, same idea. We're going to get to this in just a second. 
The second type of speed that we can talk about when we're talking about circular motion is that of rotational speed. All right, this is a little bit better, right? We're back to circular motion, we're back to rotation, spinning about an internal axis, right? The Earth spins about itself. These are the revolutions per unit time, or RPMs, okay? Okay, revolutions per unit time. So think about when you are in your vehicle and you're looking at the dash and you have the gas gauge, the oil temp, the uh, engine temperature, you have the uh, speedometer and the tachometer, right? The tachometer, that is RPMs, that is the rotation. I know it's kind of weird. It's revolutions per minute, RPMs, revolutions per unit time, but it's actually the amount of time that the engine is spinning about itself. Right? You got your flywheel going around, you got your, your serpentine belt, your timing belt, all of those wonderful things. It's telling you how fast that engine is spinning. All right? So it is spinning about itself. Your engine's not going around the car. It's not revolving around the car. It's actually rotation, but we say it's revolutions per minute. So we kind of, it's not correct, but we're using that word kind of interchangeably. Not correct at all, but this is kind of kind of the accepted way to describe it. Now you also find that there are a couple other words that we'll talk about in just a second that are not correct, but it's what the general public uses when describing circular motion. Okay, back to speeds. We got linear speed, we have rotational speed, and then our last one is tangential speed. tangential speed. Now, what tangential speed is, and I want you to think about this for a second, it sounds very similar to a tangent. Remember, a tangent, if you're talking about a circle or a curve, and we pick a point, the tangent to that point is a straight line that passes right alongside. Okay? It just, it just kisses, it just touches that point, but it's a straight line. Okay, so this is the tangential speed when we're talking about a tangent. And the tangential speed is the speed of something moving along a circular path. So we can see that this curve, it would be the speed of an object moving along that specific point, that curve. The speed of an object moving along that specific point, that's what the tangential speed is. Speed of an object moving along a circular path. That's what the tangential speed is. So just to elaborate a little bit more, a little bit, a little bit more about a tangent, it is a straight line that just touches, that just kisses the edge of circular, a circular path, okay? Um, and think about it. If we were to take a circle and draw a bunch of tangents along certain points, we would have something that looks like this. And I know you guys have all done this with straight lines before. You can actually draw a circle with just straight lines. And those are all the tangents that follow along the curve. The same thing applies for this. If we were to draw tangents along each of these areas, you would actually see the curve with just You can actually follow that curve with just the tangents. Okay? All right. Now, I want you to think of something. I want you to think that if I take a mouse. We have a mouse here, a computer mouse. That mouse is attached by a cord and, well, yes, we, uh, we don't necessarily want to break the mouse, but we're going to use it as for our advantage. And if I start swinging that mouse around and I swing it above my head, goodness, I hope nothing breaks in here or else I'll be in big trouble. 
So I swing that mouse around. And hopefully I can slow this down in the slow motion, but we'll see. I swing that mouse around and then I all of a sudden, I let it go. So it just flew off. My question to you is, how is that mouse going to fly through the air? Okay, think about this. I swing this mouse around and it's going around, right? Is it revolving or rotating? Think about it. I'm swinging it around, or right here is, I'm swinging it around there. Is it rotating or is it revolving? You're right, it's revolving. It's ro revolving around this external axis. If it was rotating, it'd be going around itself, and it's not. So it's revolving. So I'm revolving this mouse, right? And then all of a sudden, I let it go right at you guys, right there. What's going to happen? Is that mouse gonna come around and go right towards you? Or is it going to, as I let it go, is it just gonna continue off in a circle? What's gonna happen? Think about that one for a second. You are 100% right. It's gonna go in a straight line right towards you. A straight line. A straight line. Tangential speed, linear speed. Okay, are you starting to see how we still have straight lines? We still have um, one dimension when we're talking about circular motion, when we're talking about something moving in an object. I know this looks really close to my head, but it's not. Don't worry. I am a trained professional. Maybe not that trained. But this is going to fly off in a straight line. So when we actually have something that is moving, let's see, here is... Here is the string, and there is the mouse. Now that mouse is moving around in a circle. Right? There's the little mouse right there, a little wheelie turn, whatever. As we let go of this string, say at this point, this mouse will travel off in a straight line. Right? Now, if I were to connect this, and I were to draw this, what is that black line right there that I just drew? Correct. That black line is the tangent. So we can make the connection and say that if we are spinning something around above our head, anywhere, right? Something's being spun around and it breaks or we let it go that object will travel off in a tangent. It'll travel off in a straight line. All right? So that is why understanding what a tangent is is so important. So make sure you write that down. If we spin something, and if something flies off in circular motion, or an object moves in circular motion, or the force is not great enough to hold that object in anymore, it will then fly off in a tangential path. It'll fly off in a tangent. Very important to write that down. All right, everybody. So I think in the next video, we are going to cover the uh, different types of equations that we could use with regard to circular motion. It's been a pleasure, and I will see you guys all in that next video. All right. Bye, everybody.